It's time to welcome the Wine Ladies with Georgia and Suzanne, an entertaining hour topped up with great ideas about wine, where to dine, anything and everything to do with the vine. Great conversation, lots of laughter, guests from all walks of life, food and wine, music, art, sports, and much more, all on The Wine Ladies. Hi everybody, it's us, The Wine Ladies. I'm Georgia. And I'm Suzanne, and welcome to The Wine Ladies, one sip at a time. Thank you so much for joining us here this afternoon. Well, Suzanne, I have to say it has been a whirlwind week so far. The tip is going on, and uh, we've been, we're almost partied out. Not quite. We've gone to some amazing parties. It's been an incredible week. Mm -hmm. But we have to say one of our favorite parties was the pre-pre-tiff party. Yes, indeed. The launch of the 6th Annual Dine Magazine mm -hmm. with Sarah Waxman at La Societe here in Toronto. Now, that was a fantastic party. Absolutely the best tiff party ever darling <laughs> it was a lot of fun it was fantastic and today we've got Adam Waxman and Sarah Waxman in the studio first of all I want to introduce Sarah Waxman who is the founder and publisher of Dine magazine she's an author she's a restaurant critic she has she is so accomplished this lovely lady and she's also a good friend of the wine ladies we want to welcome you Sarah to the show thank you very much wonderful to have you back again <laughs> I also have to say now the apple does not fall too far from the tree also joining us uh, Sarah's very handsome and extremely talented son he is an actor he is a the uh, associate producer of Dine magazine you're a contributing writer you're a contributing photographer Wow and you're a jet-setting travel guy let me tell you <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> welcome Adam to the show thank you it's awesome to, to have you here as well. What a gorgeous, gorgeous magazine, I have to say. So this is this is the sixth annual Dime yes. magazine. Mm -hmm. It is absolutely beautiful. And who have we got on the cover here, uh, Sarah? It's uh, Cheryl Teagues, who was one of the first supermodels. Mm -hmm. She's been on the cover of Sports Illustrated several times, on Time magazine several times, mm -hmm. and on all of the top fashion magazines in U.S and now she's on the cover of Dine. And she's quite a foodie in her own right, we understand. Yes. Mm -hmm. uh, inside the magazine there is an interview with her and uh, she likes a healthy lifestyle. Mm -hmm. That's what she represents. So her, her uh, meal plan, her food plan, her exercise regime, just her life, you know, day to day. Mm -hmm. And um, I think that's what we'd all like to do. If and we she's also quite the red wine drinker, we understand as well. Red wine, <laughs> and she likes Chardonnay. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> I know. I was reading the interview they did with her, and she she got, when she needs to drop a couple of pounds, like she'll sort of take a few things out, leave the protein, but she'll also leave the red wine or the glass of wine. Glass of wine. Yes. 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 Woman after her own heart, Susan. Absolutely. <laughs> yes. So also now, Sarah. So you've been you are an icon in in the food industry. I mean, my <laughs> goodness, really, everything that you've done. Um, maybe you can tell us, like, um, with 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 all the time that you've been in, you've probably seen the evolution of the culinary scene in a really big way. Like, how would you describe it? And what would you say are like maybe some of the couple of the the real points that really really stand out over the last couple of decades? Well, when I started to write about, uh, started to be a restaurant critic and a cookbook writer about the same time, mm -hmm. uh, it, uh, Ontario, Toronto, was uh, roast beef. And spaghetti. And, and spaghetti, <laughs> maybe, you know, Italian Oh, restaurant. maybe. <laughs> but then, all of a sudden, we had the Italian Revolution. Right. <laughs> and pasta just burst upon the scene. Mm -hmm. And a lot of restaurateurs made a lot of money because a little bit of pasta cost two cents, you know, mm -hmm. and they would sell it a dish for twelve dollars. Mm -hmm. So their their products did not cost a lot of money. Right. And then I remember writing about in January to watch out for something new called risotto. Oh, oh okay. <laughs> well, that suddenly <laughs> took off. Yes, uh, new in in North American restaurants uh -huh. called risotto. And then uh, I remember writing. Watch out for the $14 appetizer, uh -huh. uh, because at that time an appetizer, a salad was $5, uh -huh. you know, six, seven dollars. Yeah. Well, we don't have that anymore, and things changed. Yeah. Today, our uh, raw ingredients 
are very expensive because we, we have discovered the treasure that we have here in Ontario with our local products. Mm -hmm. We have everything here. Yeah. Fruits, vegetables, meats, poultry, everything wine. is here. <laughs> wine, absolutely. And the wine industry is growing like crazy yes. in Niagara. Excuse me, there's a little fly here. <laughs> it's a fruit it's fly, a, probably. A, a local this fruit fly. A local, a local fruit, fruit fly, yes. yes. <laughs> it, it loves me. <laughs> but, uh, you know, a lot of farmland that was just ordinary farmland has now become wineries mm -hmm. in Niagara. True. And um, thank goodness that there aren't banks of shopping malls taking up all that yes. beautiful mm -hmm. space. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. But um, yes, a lot has changed. Mm -hmm. Now there are uh, pop-up restaurants that uh, innovative... And the food trucks. Yes, the food, the trucks food trucks are so yeah. popular. Yeah. Innovative true. young chefs, they just want to do something. They don't have the training. They didn't spend uh -huh. years peeling potatoes and, uh -huh. you know, and, and learning the way that a Michael Statlander did. Um, or a Jamie Kennedy. They just want to, to do what they love. So they do this and um, they, they don't last long. However, they are the precursors uh -huh. of what's to come because uh -huh. okay. they will be... So they be, set the stage, so yes, to speak. Mm -hmm. They will be the classic restaurateurs of our future. Right. Because they have the passion, mm -hmm. and they'll get the skills the as they go along. Uh -huh. Yeah, wonderful. Yeah. So, were you always a foodie in 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 your earlier years as well? Was that something you enjoyed to do, or I, you know, the first thing I ever cooked was uh, when I was uh, a teenager, and my mother suddenly announced to me that she was pregnant and was going to have a baby. Oh. Well, we had to make dinner, you know. <laughs> we had to make dinner for, for our father. Right. And my sister and I, well, I never cooked anything. And I just thought the food uh, materialized. <laughs> yeah. Presto. I didn't think about it. So I remember the first thing I made was rice pudding. And rice for dinner? Rice, rice, pudding. Rice, pudding. <laughs> rice pudding. Well, I, funny. You know, I didn't for most know what people, else. it's toast. <laughs> Your That's mom would have had adventure in her heart That's even back right. then. <laughs> so, um, oh, but I, uh, when I left home, I realized that I had to cook for myself. Mm -hmm. And um, uh, because I, you can't just go to restaurants. So I saw what they served in restaurants. And I said, hey, I can do this. And I created a repertoire of about six really good dishes. Uh -huh. And Adam yeah. ate them over no, and no, over again. Long before, <laughs> long before, <laughs> long before, yes. oh, long before and that. And then okay. I realized when I was dating that men really love to be invited over for dinner. Uh -huh. ah. So I had my repertoire of six <laughs> dishes. What if you had a seventh date? Then what would you do? <laughs> Start repeat. all over again. <laughs> repeat. Adapt. Okay. You know? Yeah. Um, oh, but um, oh, I always uh, say that uh, one of my first dates with uh, my late husband, uh, Al, mm -hmm. um, he, he, of course, came into my apartment. And, of course, his nature is that he opened the fridge. Right. <laughs> <laughs> and when he saw all my, you know, food neatly there, and he was very impressed. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. So it was you know? love at first bite. <laughs> you know, don't they say a way to a man's heart is through his stomach? That's what they say. Yeah. Adam, would you agree with that? I would. <laughs> so now, Adam, when you were growing up then, so your mom, here's your mom, a real foodie. And so did you, I, like, were you serving Adam like octopus and all these exotic foods from when okay. he was young? I, I was writing cookbooks when Adam was young. Uh -huh. And I remember uh, when, when you started writing King's Wife Cookbook, I was really resentful because I didn't want other people to be able to make <laughs> what she oh, was making. You, oh, how you wanted uh -huh. to feel special. Well, yes. you know, you when, protective, huh? when you write a cookbook, you have to test. I don't know if they still do this, but that was our integrity at the time. We had to test each recipe three times uh -huh. mm. just to make sure. Or maybe it needs a little more or a little less, you know. And Adam was so happy 
You know, three kinds of spare ribs, three kinds <laughs> of chocolate cake, three kinds of paella. He oh. was in his glory, well, remember? Not a bad I deal did. there, Adam. Well, not no wonder you rose to be such a foodie. Yeah. Really? The writing was on the wall, Adam. Well, now, I had a good you, start. Yes, I, I wanted to ask you, I know, as you know, my si we are sisters and we work together, and you are family as well, son and mom. How does that work for you? Are there any um, interesting times that occur that you'd like to reveal? Do you mean our difficulties? Audience? Well, difficulties or fun stories or... What I like best is uh, near, near the end of the production when we're both writing and trying to get everything done. I'm sitting on one side of the table with my laptop. My mom's on the other side with her laptop. We're editing each other's work and it's uh -huh. like a Lennon McCartney oh. in, their, in their good days. Yes, yes. You know? <laughs> Awesome. I love working with my mom. Yeah. I've got a lot to learn from her. Yes. And I love what we're doing. Mm -hmm. So it's uh, quite a blessing. And you've traveled all over. So in fact, you brought a couple of things in, Adam, yes, for I us did. to sample. One of your trip trips was to Peru. I mean, how lucky was that and how amazing was that? It was amazing. Maybe you can tell us. That. Well, tell us a little bit about your trip okay. and then maybe about what you brought over. Well, first of all, uh, initially, I thought I, w whenever I travel somewhere, I want to see the whole country. Mm -hmm. And in Peru, there's so many different things to do. So many sites that are mystical and unexplained. But when I arrived in Lima and I started eating and dining out at restaurants, I thought I could spend the whole time here. Yeah. Because every restaurant is amazing. It's not like in Toronto we have great restaurants and great chefs. Right. But there, it was like uh, going on a trip to New York to see some Broadway productions. Yeah. You'll have dinner one night and then the next night. And then three days later, you'll be talking about that that course that we had at that restaurant and how the chef paired these together, it was like we were talking about a Broadway show. Wow. wow. Because wow. they have uh, an unparalleled ingredient base. Mm -hmm. uh, th there's 104 different biozones in the world, 84 of which exist in Peru. Really? So if you have an ingredient, just like with wine, if you have wow. a, a grape or any ingredient growing at uh, a, a, at a certain altitude, right. you know, a low altitude, it's yeah. going to be very different than if it's growing at a higher altitude. Mm -hmm. Or uh, in the southern part of the country versus the north, oh. uh, on the coast versus in the jungle or in the desert or in the mountains. So they, they have a lot of different ingredients, different colors, different flavors, and really ambitious chefs that are doing extraordinary things. So wow, do they have culinary schools there or are they self-taught? More. Uh, what I found was a lot of chefs go abroad to train, oh, I but see. then they come back uh -huh. because they know that what they've got in Peru is incomparable. Yeah. So uh, you know you have chefs who are virtuosos, and they are the the stars of gastronomy in Peru are known all over South America, and uh, and they really are superstars. So when one uh, opens up a restaurant, that's where everyone has to go, oh, wow. and there are lineups for months. So because you had written that, that, that um, Lima is like the gastronomic capital of the Americas. Absolutely. Said, wow, seriously? Of all of the Americas? I mean, of both North and South America, Lima. That's, that's what it's billed as, and I concur. Wow. And now that Air that's Canada flies direct, Air Canada flies direct to Lima, mm -hmm. it's not that far from Toronto. It's like seven and a half hours. During the rainy season, you go for breakfast. It's, yeah. it's only <laughs> four hundred. Come back. <laughs> yeah, during the rainy season, it's only four hundred and something dollars return. Wow, that's nothing. You yeah. you you have to pay that to go to Montreal if you don't book in advance. Mm -hmm. yeah. Wow, that's that's awesome. No, it, it really is worth it to go just for dinner. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Holy. But incredible. then there's there's so much else. Uh, like the background behind us, uh, I went to Machu Picchu, which is amazing. unbelievable. Amazing. You get there and you think, no wonder the, the Spanish never found it. It's in the middle of nowhere. Yeah. And even if they did find it, to get up there, it's, it's so glorious. So Machu Picchu is like, a, it's like an ancient Inca village, I think. Is that what it is? And then you climb up. So you have to ascend to a certain degree. Then you find the village. And then you peak well, you can, where. Is that how it works? Tell us how it works. You can take a bus. Okay. But uh, still, you have. All the way up? You're in the Sacred Valley, which is a very high altitude to begin with. Okay. Then you take a bus or you can hike. A lot of people hike with the sun early in the morning. And uh, you get up there, it's very high. So some people have problems with altitude. Uh -huh. uh, but then you just chew on coca leaves and miraculously you're better. Now what were those leaves again you were mentioning? Coca. <laughs> uh, but The derivative being of what? Of cocaine. Of cocaine. 
So that, okay, no, carry yeah. on. <laughs> but uh, it's... Um, Super energy. <laughs> they, they have all these organic ingredients, whether it's grains or leaves, that uh, are, they're, they're potent and they work. Yeah. Uh, you, you take the bus up to Machu Picchu, mm -hmm. which is, uh, as you can see, it's, it's at the top, yeah. uh, you know, among the clouds. And then beyond that, there's something called Huayna Picchu, which is an even higher peak. Oh, okay. They only let a few hundred people up each day, uh -huh. and uh, you can hike up that. But even just to be at Machu Picchu, you get there, and uh, what's extraordinary about it may not be the initial sight, but when you're walking through and realizing mm -hmm. that you have to walk up and down, you have to be amazed at how they built this yeah. and why, and that they have... Um, what did know, they build? Well, they built this fortress and, and uh, an agricultural area that terraces the decline of the mountain. It's so steep. Yeah. And what you see is just what's been discovered. There's still so much so more. So do they grow things on these terraces? Yes. Oh, they do. Okay. And it's so steep. Yeah. You just wonder, how did they live here? Yeah. And if somebody had to run an errand, you know, to oh, go yeah. down. <laughs> That's a lot of walking. And a lot how of they get their animals up there. Yeah. Amazing. Yeah. So what did you bring for us to enjoy from Peru today? What I brought is pisco. Pisco is from a grape, and it's distilled to proof. Okay. So uh, if you have something that says it's 42% alcohol, it's not Maybe. distilled to 50% and yeah. then Without watered choice. down. Uh, in this case, 41.5. Yeah. It's not distilled to a certain number and then watered down. There's no added sugar, no ah. added water, nothing. It's basically this is the distilled, uh, this is from the grape, mm -hmm. directly from the grape. There's nothing else. And so what is it, 42% alcohol? This is 41.5, 41. mm -hmm. and this is from the Quebranta grape from uh, Arequipa, which is in the south of Peru. Okay. There's uh, a, a, a tourism initiative called the Pisco Trail, which stretches along 1,300 kilometers along the, near the coast of Peru. And these are the areas from which the grapes are, uh, are used, the Quebranta is one of them. Okay. Another bottle here. Is this the other bottle here? Yeah, it's, it's, okay. uh, Let's see it there. it's an Italia grape. Uh, it's labeled Achilado, but it's, a, it's a actually an, another liquor put in there. Oh, okay. But uh, there are eight different grapes. They're uh -huh. all from Peru. Okay. And uh, the center awesome. of Pisco production, mm -hmm. where, where that is from, is Ica. Ica, okay. Um, and it's so just how do they drink this? Where you can drink is it, it straight. after dinner drink or with dinner? You or can drink it straight. And what I also found was a lot of chefs are using it in their cooking. Oh. I went to a Japanese restaurant, and the chef said uh, that he would much rather use pisco than rice wine because uh -huh. it has more flavor. It's more complex. Uh -huh. uh, it's floral, herbaceous. Well, I would like to try some. Okay, maybe we should, uh, um, but the I other. I think it goes with any course. <laughs> 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 but, uh, the, the I have never had it before. Have you, Georgia? No, I don't think I so have. This is so going to be a first. Be a but experience. But the, the national mm -hmm. beverage is the Pisco Sour. Uh -huh. And there's also something called a Chilcano, which is from the Italian influence. Uh, it's the Pisco and ginger ale and lemon. But the Pisco Sour, um, it's modeled after whiskey sour, and it was uh -huh. invented in Lima in the 1920s. Okay. Uh, but you can have it with any number of different kinds of fruits that they have. So, uh -huh. for example, I made one with a fruit that was just discovered three years ago called a sachi tomate. They've wow. got all these fruits and, and ingredients that they're still discovering from the Amazon jungle. Mm -hmm. uh, so they have a, a Pisco Sour Day, it's a national holiday, and restaurants go through thousands a day. Wow, because I saw in your article one restaurant served like 3,000, I think, Pisco Sours in yeah. one day. Yes. Wow, that's, that's a lot of... Well, Pisco. they love it. <laughs> So would this be served uh, more on the uh, a chilled, I guess, right? Where chilled. Okay. Sarah, would you like to have some? I've From tried there. it. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. I well, like the I, pisco I sour more than the pisco than just plain. 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 Oh, okay, yeah. In, in Toronto, mm -hmm. I have found two places where you can get a pisco sour. And a really good one. Oh, okay. really? That, that's so give us the secret. Do, do because who is that? Maybe we'll go for dinner tonight. Maybe oh, we'll there you go. <laughs> <laughs> We're going to give them a plug. <laughs> but, but the thing about Pisco Sours is that uh, it's not just the ingredients, okay. but knowing how to balance it and have, uh -huh. to have a well-structured cocktail. Uh, there's Bubaloo Restaurant in Yorkville. Mm. Oh, yes. Mm -hmm. So they serve uh, Pisco They do. There? Their chef is Peruvian. And their bartender mm. makes excellent uh, cocktails, pisco sours, and I, I had um, a maracuya sour, which is passion fruit, 
And you there's say actually that awfully well, Thank Adam. You. Wow, the, the accent yeah. is wonderful. But there's, there's mm. actually a video on our website of how to make it. Um, okay. And then at Boulevard Cafe, or, uh, a Boulevard restaurant on Harbor Street. Uh huh. They make, they make a good Pisco Sour? Excellent Pisco Sours. Okay. And at Babalu on Thursday nights, there's Salsa Night. Oh, and you can salsa salsa happens to be <laughs> Salsa <laughs> Night, too. What do you know? That's but those, this those is very chances. lovely. It I is, like yeah. this. Yeah, what is that? The, um, what, do you, what flavor do you get from there? I don't know. It kind of has a bit of a floralish kind of bouquet, I think, it does. actually. And that is going to be, th these mm. two are going to be very different. Okay. Uh, in Arequipa, it's a much higher altitude. Aha, uh -huh. okay. Um, what th this is one of my favorites from the Ica area. Yeah. And Ica is known for the Ica Let's stones. Let's try the other one. The, okay. Have you heard of the Ica stones? They're these petroglyphs, huge stones with yeah. markings on them. And there are all these theories how they got there. Oh. It's also right near the plains of Nazca. Oh, okay. Which are these markings, nobody knows what they are, but you can only see them from the sky. Oh, I heard, I saw, yes, I heard about that. So that's yeah. incredible. Yeah. That's one of the most Sounds like a interesting and holiday. peculiar places on oh, Earth. Let's go. Yeah. Let's, Let's go, go Sarah. Sarah. Yeah. <laughs> I'm with you. Let's go. Let's go Adam could be our tour guide. He's oh, very sure, knowledgeable. Sure. If you take me out to dinner yes. in Lima, I yes. will take you to Ica for some, some achilado, some Italia, some quebranta. But you, you Sarah, have to know what do you that think? <laughs> you can try, you can try you Pisco from, you know, there are other countries that are uh, claiming to produce Pisco. Right. But the authentic, original, true Pisco is from Peru. Okay. It originated in the city of Peru, or sorry, in the city of Pisco. Yeah. It comes from the urns that are called Pisco, and that is uh, from the Quechua word was the, the ancient people that lived in Peru yeah. that were ruled by the Inca. Uh -huh. uh, it's, it's truly and classically Peruvian. It's okay, good. Okay, it's very nice so. actually, yeah. Mm -hmm. So this Pisco then is, the, like, it, it varies according to the kind of grape that they use? Yes, there right? are eight different grapes. Yeah. Okay. And the aging, I guess, too. Would no, it's, it's no? you know, right away it's distilled. They, um, I don't know about the aging process, okay. it's, it's just the distillation. Okay. So, you know, sometimes it can be dis distilled once or twice, oh. but um, it's distilled directly to proof. Okay. Ready to drink right away. <laughs> so what, what you're Those drinking, of you who are impatient, this is the drink for you. <laughs> no, but what you're drinking is directly from the grape. Okay. So uh, yeah. It's very nice. smooth yeah, as it well. It is smooth, yeah. Mm -hmm. yes. It's very good, yeah. So then the other one that you brought, this is from a higher elevation, you said. Are you well, not, you're not trying any with us, Adam? I would like to. Oh, okay. here. We'll, we'll, we'll try classes. this one. Okay, so whatever you this like. Is, sure. This is from the higher el elevation. That's the higher elevation. Toro del Gala. Okay, so this is lower. Okay, and it's a different grape, this one then? Yes. Okay. Um, the other thing in this area, Arequipa, what they eat is alpaca. Which is? It's, is it a marsupial? Yeah, that's an animal of some it's, kind. It's like a llama. Oh, yeah, a llama, oh, yeah. I, see. I have an alpaca throw, which is so <laughs> soft and beautiful. <laughs> mm -hmm. Really? That's a big, long white mm -hmm. fur, I think, right? Is that what that is? No, it's... it's All curly? It's knitted into something. Oh, okay. Oh. We'll have to that. look that up. Yes. Yeah. But I just I find yeah. it very exciting yeah. to, to You go sound to a, passionate about it. Yeah. Well, when Sounds you go like to you another an country awesome time. and they have different proteins or different fruits or different grains that don't exist yeah. in other places and you get to try them and you get to have a, a liquor that, that doesn't exist anywhere else yes. really. Yeah. So we're just slowly getting that into Ontario. Yeah. yeah. So it's you've got funny. all this in Dine magazine. Your your travels in all Peru in and are, in are featured mm -hmm. in the magazine here. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's lovely. Yeah, awesome. So let me okay. pour the other one. Sure, okay. okay, let me get that for you. Okay. Looks. Yeah. There you go. Okay, what I'll, I'll do, George, is we'll uh, put this together. Yeah. Okay, then, all right. Uh, and then here's and we'll one for share. Adam and for we'll share Sarah. Because it's okay. a lot of... A lot of it's a lot of a lot of lot of yeah a lot of pisco yeah exactly the show will be wild by the end if we drink all of that <laughs> well I'll help you out with that so just a little bit in this oh. one whoops I'm tied to the chair oh, oh okay <laughs> there you go so now what how would this differ Adam like this one compared to the first one what like what thank what you. characteristics well, might it have well, to show the what I yes think for sure article? sure go when ahead you're, when you're at a higher elevation. The grapes have more contact with the sun, particularly at that latitude. So they're showered in UV rays. It's just like in Argentina, uh, the, the grapes at a higher latitude, or uh -huh. higher elevation higher, yep. and a lower latitude, uh, the skin is thicker. Yep. And that's where all the good stuff is. Uh -huh. So you're going to have more concentrated flavor. Oh, okay. But this one from Ica mm -hmm. is also a particularly good one. 
And here we have the article that's in, in Dine magazine. And you can see there's a Thank gorgeous you. picture here of all kinds wow. of amazing fruit. fruit. Yeah. Three quarters of which I don't recognize. Half so those fruits look like they come from a Star Trek episode. Yes. Yeah, they do. They do. What are they? <laughs> so where, in, in the center, there's uh, cacao. That's where, no, no, sorry, that's an oh, oster. But the uh, green in one? the center of the fruit picture, the red and yellow ones, oh, that's cacao. Oh, these big ones here, these pods, yeah. Yes. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and to the left of that, I have no idea what that is. But uh, there's also, <coughs> okay, there's bananas there. They have... So many different kinds of bananas. Oh yes, I see. Yeah. I well, these little guys scarf. here. These are bananas. These little ones here. They have little ones. They have big ones. They have red. Uh, oh no! Here, here they are over here. I see. They've got okay. about fifty this different kinds of bananas. This is like finding Waldo or something. Yeah, Pete. <laughs> find the <laughs> find the, piece the fruit. Picture at the bottom. Wow! Yeah. It looks like is an there? amazing, amazing uh, holiday. And oh, so here's the pisco sour. Yes. Oh, there you are. That's a particular okay. kind. Yeah. You know, every restaurant has their own. Now, do you have the recipe for that? If we were to let people know about that. Would you reveal mm. that to our audience? Of course. Perhaps? It's just uh, the pisco, mm -hmm. lime. Uh, some places use a, a gum syrup. But um, what is it? Pisco, lime. You're putting me on the spot. Uh, that's uh, okay. It'll we'll come back to you. We'll put a little it bit in of egg white. white. Egg white. Go to, go to the Dine Magazine oh. website and yeah. you can see them okay. making it. And awesome. what is the why, what is the uh, website for Dine Magazine? DineMagazine.ca. Oh, that's easy to remember. <laughs> and the Twitter is at Dine Magazine to follow Adam and, and Sarah as well. With you all know what's tweets. funny though? When when I was we were at this market looking at different fruit, and I'd ask how many different kinds of bananas do you have? Yeah. And everyone would give me a different answer. <laughs> uh, quinoa, they'd say, oh, we have 80. And then one person said, we have 800 different kinds of quinoa. Uh, with wow. the potatoes, I got answers from 1,500 to 5,000 different kinds of potatoes. Holy what do you think of that, that's Sarah? Amazing. That's a lot of different kinds of fruit and potatoes. You could start your career entirely <laughs> over and just focus on oh, Peru. On the potato. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my goodness. No. <laughs> See, what, what I love about so this is it's got this. a nice balance of heat. Yes, it does. It's, yeah. it's not too... Uh, it's, it's bigger, oh, too. It's the nose is totally different. Uh, different. More, uh, the it's not volatile. Bigger, mm -hmm. It's not going to burn you. Much yeah. more heat in this, yeah. for sure. Mm -hmm. oh, you see, fun, it needs yeah. a little bit of lime and well, all I those like other it. ingredients, and it really makes a refreshing mm -hmm. cocktail. I could see that, yeah. My <laughs> nose is now cleared out. <laughs> I went there with um, uh, Zoltan Zabo, mm -hmm. who's a sommelier from uh, Toronto, mm -hmm. yes. and we we had enough cocktails in, in three weeks to, for a village. <laughs> <laughs> but we were sampling different kinds of. Uh, of course, you were just tasting. Them. Just you taste. weren't drinking. Oh, of course. Of course. <laughs> but uh, you know, we'd have different piscos every day. Yes. Um, we we tried pisco in Ica and then in Arequipa, uh, as well in Lima, so. We covered a lot, and we got uh, quite a good education in Pisco. And then at the end, we made our own cocktails, which was... Uh, that must have been fun. It was. Yeah, let the creative juices run. Excuse you might pun. remember <laughs> uh, Arequipa because about 15 years ago, it was the site of an enormous mine, gold mine oh. find. Oh, okay. That made a lot of headlines because it was discovered by a Canadian company. Oh, I don't, I don't remember that. How long ago was that? About 15, 15 years ago. 15 years, oh, something it was? like that. Oh, I don't remember that, actually. Oh. Hmm. I like that. I do say, okay, so Pisco is a drink that we should look for. It's, it's available in the LCBO, although not the no. Peruvian one. There, there's one Peruvian Pisco that's available at the LCBO. Okay. But um, I... I've found that, uh, at, again, not that I'm trying to plug people, but I am, yeah. uh, at Bubaloo yes. and at Boulevard Cafe, they both have really good Pisco. Okay. I don't know where they get it from, right. they, but they know how to make a good cocktail with it. I think, I think Bubaloo is one of the restaurants you feature in Dine Magazine yes. as well, right? Yes. 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 I've, I've definitely had uh, dinner there, and I have enjoyed a little bit of salsa dancing. Yes, I remember <laughs> that. It's been a while since I've been there at <laughs> Sarah's going on. <laughs> <laughs> so, Sarah, you also, I, li I like the section in the Dine magazine, Sarah says, and you, hi you like highlight a couple of different restaurants, like what's going on in the scene, and, I, and not only Toronto, I mean, you do talk about restaurants from all over, but you did yes. feature quite a few in Toronto yes. um, th in this issue. Um, because this is where we live, mm -hmm. but uh, we always write about the dining scene all over the world. Yes. Um, I went to Tel Aviv. Mm-hmm. 
I'm a member of the Society of American Travel Writers, and we had our uh, annual conference there. So there must have been about 75 of us. And um, the dining scene there yeah. has absolutely exploded. Hmm. The uh, young chefs have gone to Europe, learned their skills, come back, and just as Adam says, mm -hmm. use the, the fruits of the land. Yeah. And they, you know, there are 72 different nations, uh, people from nations, that, and, and they've taken all the spices, the, uh, the, the Yemenite, the Russian, the uh, Swiss, the American, they've put all this together and just created such exciting things. Wow. Mm, it was amazing. fabulous. It's, it's like something's happened. If, if you've been to a country uh, you know, 20 years ago, yeah. and you go back now, the, the difference in culture from this local food movement, this food revolution yeah. that's happened all over the world, uh -huh. makes it a completely different journey. That's amazing. And I, I understand like Tel Aviv is a very vibrant community, isn't it? Nobody like, sleeps. Yeah. Everybody <laughs> is <laughs> eating, sitting, <laughs> drinking coffee, talking on yep. the cell phone, yeah. <laughs> day or night, 24 hours. Mm -hmm. Sounds and like there's a stuff fun place. going on. At every, every hour, there's it's, it's morning coffee, it's afternoon coffee, you know, it's, it's cocktails, it's pastry, it's a sandwich, it's dinner. Yep. It's always a, some food time <laughs> yeah. to sit and socialize. Yeah. I like the sound of that, I have to say. And what about in Toronto? So like, what, like what's going on in our city? Like I know you talk about a few restaurants, maybe you want to mention, are there a couple that stand out in your mind that is like a, yeah. a must go to or for a certain kind you of know, cuisine? For me, um, you, you're asking me personally. Yes. Uh, I have some difficulty with a lot of new restaurants huh? because they turn the music up very high uh -huh. and so everyone has to scream. S scream. Yes. Yeah. And when I, my lips are moving and I can't hear what I'm saying, yeah. uh, that's time for me to go. Uh -huh. I can't eat and shout at the same time yeah. because eating is going in. Mm -hmm. Shouting is going out. <laughs> There's a conflict here, you know? Mm. But yeah. Um, yeah. I, I, I do have a few favorite restaurants that I go to and I know that I can enjoy myself. And mm -hmm. even, even the new, uh, very noisy ones. Yeah. If you go at 6.30 yes. and you're out by 8, you yeah. can just enjoy the food. That's when I'm arriving. That's, That's when right. you're arriving, Adam. Yes, they're the arriving house. at 9 o'clock, you know, like a new restaurant that I uh, have enjoyed is uh, West Lodge. That's one of Charles Caboose restaurants. And, um, well, I know the chef from another restaurant and, yeah. you know, it's just, um, the food is so good. But I went there on a Saturday night and my my friend and I just sat there and looked at each other we couldn't speak <laughs> couldn't speak <laughs> it's for those are times when you're having a really bad date you know <laughs> it's best just to not talk to, to each other and just not be heard exactly <laughs> and another thing is there are some restaurateurs who really made a name for themselves mm -hmm. uh, uh, with wonderful innovative cuisine yes and then they say, well, I'm going to open a second and a third uh -huh. and a fourth. Oh, and they and lose all that. sight of what And something mm -hmm. happens. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, it gets that watered be, down. Yes, because uh, contrary to popular belief, you can only be in one place at one time. True. Yeah, As that's my dad true. used to say, you yeah. can't dance at two weddings with one ass. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but he did. <laughs> He did? <laughs> he had, if there was a thing from, let's say, 5 to 7, another from 6 to 8, <laughs> another 5.30 to 7.30, <laughs> he would have that limo waiting and touch down in each place. He'd make wow. an appearance. Uh, he was a mm -hmm. remarkable man. I've heard that from many sources. Many Thank sources. you. Yeah. I think Adam takes after him in a lot of ways. Yeah. Uh, which uh, is very interesting to me to see. I mean, good ways. Mm -hmm. Yes, yeah. Well, and I'm sure that's nice to see that too. Yeah. Yeah, of course, yeah. And, well, uh, I know, we love I Adam. Like <laughs> I like it. <laughs> you know, um, 
Adam was not interested in uh, Dine magazine the first few years mm -hmm. because he was accustomed to what I did ever since he was born. Mm -hmm. Right, right. And then once, it was the, the second or third issue, I can't remember, I was wiped out and I said, Adam, I need help. you have to help me. But yes. I remember I wanted to write for you earlier. Yeah. So my mom you know, dispatched me to an event and she said, y you can write about this event and we'll, we'll see. Then when she saw what I wrote, she said, it's okay, honey, I'll do it myself. Oh, oh. <laughs> dear. <laughs> because I had to earn my, I had to earn yeah, my place. Yeah, during your strike. Exactly, yes. yes. So. Yeah. But um, That's funny. He, he came with me and he worked and he loved it. So in the beginning, uh, he was the director of uh, marketing. marketing. Uh -huh. um, and then last year, he earned the right to be associate uh, publisher. I saw that on the mask. Yes, yes, because he does everything I do now. When was it? Last year, two years ago, when we were having our launch party and you made a little toast at the, at the house before we left, and he said anyone else would have fired me five times. <laughs> Well, that's, 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 that's what families thing, are for anyway. We can argue, yeah. and, and I, yeah. I know I won't get fired. Right. <laughs> well, or maybe, no. maybe I will. I, oh, it's, <laughs> it's not that we argue, you know. I, I'm very open to hear another Ideas. person's opinion. Mm -hmm. yeah. You know, we're different generations. Mm -hmm. Yes. But and we trust each other. Yeah. But yeah. that's probably yeah. really good that you're different generations. Because yes, you're it is. each bringing different things we to bring the party. We bring different things. Absolutely. And yeah. while, uh, I mean, he is very interested in uh, the internet and the website and social media and all that stuff that I don't even want to think about. Mm -hmm. Yes, yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And um, I mean, I like to I like to sit in my silk pajamas at my computer and, and write it quietly. <laughs> you know, that's, that's well, my Well, at least idea. we know they're silk. <laughs> <laughs> I have them in all colors. Of course, <laughs> I'm not I'm surprised. Sure does, yes. <laughs> well, some people have, a, you know, gray flannel suits to go to work, <laughs> so I, I have mine. But um, all, all these that's other great. things, Adam is interested in them. Yeah. I don't want to climb Machu Picchu and yeah. <laughs> go to, you know, do that kind of thing. And he You'll do Manhattan. Yes, <laughs> I will do Manhattan. There and in this issue, I did Palm Beach. Oh, that's okay, and, too. <laughs> you know, Adam wanted to go um, and write about the Rocky Mountaineer, uh -huh. which is that wonderful train. Yes. Um, and that's great. Yeah. You know, we each have... That's right. I'm, I'm uh, going to Italy this year, and next year we're going to have a big feature on Italy. Um, because really, when you ask people what, what is your favorite cuisine, they will often say Italian. Italian. Mm -hmm. Yeah. There's yes. something it's about it. It's carbs. That's what it is. Yes. <laughs> it's all in the carbs. Yes, but right. we have to walk a lot. That's true. We do have to yes. walk. Or so run a lot. <laughs> but one, one thing that we've been finding is that with each issue, we want to highlight a different province in Canada yes. to answer, to, to ask and hopefully answer the question, what is Canadian cuisine? Mm -hmm. And so we find, you know, in our travels from BC to Newfoundland, everybody has really embraced the local movement. Right. And they're really getting back to their roots, so to speak, yes. uh, embracing what they have and trying to put a different twist on it, mm -hmm. whether it's Peru, Israel, or Japan, where I went again this year, yes. uh, or Palm Beach, or in this issue, we highlighted Nova Scotia, Scotia. Yeah. Mm -hmm. and uh, also in Ontario, Collingwood. Yes, every that's we'll true. We've got some this. Yeah. So every region yeah. in, in this country, yeah. they're developing a cuisine uh, ingredients that they're trying to promote that they can because they have it in abundance. Right, yeah. No, but the evolution of, of the, like the culinary mm. scene, like we were saying. I know, Sarah, you had written in, the, in your opening remarks too. I think somebody, some American host asked you, like I guess, I don't know, like 20 years ago, yes. 30 years ago, you know, how would you define Canadian What's Canadian cu cuisine? Right, and what did you say? I said, well, it's the same as American cuisine, except it's eaten a little further north. <laughs> <laughs> Such a good so line. That's definitely not your answer today to that question. No, no, no. no yeah, no, that's no. a very oh, good thing. Yeah, yeah. Yes, oh, I but love it. That, that talk show one. doesn't exist. <laughs> well, I'll. let's talk about this because you know when um, I mean this this winery is like 
Collingwood, George, yes. Georgian Bay. Like, who would ever think? I don't think anybody really thinks mm. that there or is, is knows that much about it that there are vineyards up there and there's a winery. There's actually two. Two um, wineries. The, okay. The, the other one is in Meaford. It's called Coffin Ridge. Uh huh. And they have hybrid grapes that can sustain the cold climate. Okay. Uh, but this one in particular, Georgian Hills, I quite like because it truly reflects the apple pie trail okay. that that, uh, that initiative that's taken off so well what do you mean and the apple pie trail what do you well mean by that there, there's this initiative in in georgian bay initially it was to uh connect the farmers and the restaurants but it's really taken off because the there's seven thousand five hundred acres of apples okay ah, and okay. so they can do anything with them they can uh make what we have here an iced apple wine. <laughs> mm -hmm. or so this here? The yes. Ice, oh, oh yeah. it's an apple. Ida, Ida, Ida red, the apple, oh. Ida, a, Ida apple. Yes. yes, and I think that's quintessentially Ontario. Uh-huh. You know, we, we all know the Ontario apple. Is it like an, right. a, like an, um, like a sweet wine or? Yes. Oh, it's sweet. And okay. then the, the Civil Blanc, uh, that has apple notes in it, of course, because there were apple orchards everywhere. Right. So you taste the apple and the pear. Mm -hmm. um, I, I think that it's, it's one of the greatest destinations we have in Ontario because there's so much you can do. Uh, yeah. I went with my wife for our own triathlon, uh, cycling, mm -hmm. paddling, and apple pie making. Yeah. Oh, that's a new, I, I didn't think that was part <laughs> of the triathlon. What could be better? <laughs> so, uh, but along the way, you can yeah. visit this winery or, or the, any of, there's the cheese gallery in Thornberry yeah. where you can sample the wines and pair it with the cheese. Mm -hmm. And uh, these pair very well with an apple pie or a cheddar. Uh -huh. uh, ingredients that are, or, or recipes that are, again, what we think of as being Ontario. Yes, yeah, that's awesome. The restaurants that Adam writes about in that section, mm -hmm. each one is more unusual than the other. Really? There are a lot of artisanal yes. uh, food people mm -hmm. in those areas. Mm -hmm. And uh, you know, it's a long, cold winter, yeah. so they have a lot of time to be creative. Well, it's an area where people go, uh, Collingwood and, and the whole Georgian Bay area, uh, it's a destination for interest-oriented people. Yeah. And what happens is with a lot of people that I met there, the different artisans, they just went to visit and then they realized they wanted to stay. Uh -huh. You know, there was a, a, a coffee, there's a place called Espresso Post in Collingwood. Yeah. They're from Seattle. They make coffee. Uh -huh. But they left Seattle and wound up in Collingwood. Really? Wow. For the quality of life. Wow, that's something. I know, it's not just skiing. You don't just go no. up north and ski there. There's like tons of things to do, right? Yeah. So it's a wonderful community, yeah. Awesome. Well, so let's give uh, that vino a try. Yeah, let's yes. try it. So I, this I is, must we say, have to say, just a couple thing, sips yeah? of this, and I'm, you're yeah, going to Yeah, I know, we're home. happy all the time the show. <laughs> <laughs> I see that. All right, well, do you want to just give it a, sure. a little try? And yes. then, um, Sarah, I don't know if you want to give it a little try as well. But this is uh, Georgian Hills Vineyards, and I initially, th the first time I visited them was in the winter. Uh-huh. Um, Thank you. And the, uh, well, you'll, you'll try. Oh, thank you. And we'll share. And we'll share okay. one, yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. We're sisters. We always share everything. Mm -hmm. So, Adam, so this is a, um, is this like a semi-sweet wine then, or is it vinified totally dry, or? Well... I, I taste a bit of sweetness. A little bit hint of sweetness. A little okay. bit of apple. It's not from an apple like the Ida Red, but, right. but you get the apple notes from it. Right. And because it's also like you were saying, the, the vineyards are all like immersed all, all with the apple orchards all around them, I guess. Mm -hmm. so well, no, now the, on, on that uh, estate, the, it's, it's vineyards. It's all vineyards? Okay. Yes. And, um, you know, they, they have their different lots from which they make the Ida Red mm. or the Silva Blanc, and they've got other wines. Uh, that, that you can find and yeah um, but you can taste the minerality mm -hmm. and uh, the apple notes that yes, if definitely. this were made anywhere else try. in the province would yes. be completely different yes exactly yes. I would yeah. like apple pie and cheese you know right that, now uh, you know what I'm with you Sarah on that one I haven't had had any apple pie but in it a just long. you too. know uh, just a taste of that yes that sounds like the ideal pairing I that's, agree with you. That's delicious. Yeah, it's very, very nice. How and much it, is that a bottle? Do you have any idea? I don't know how much it is. Mm. I'm not sure. But uh, I'm sure that it's I'm I'm sure it's reasonable. Yeah. And I was I was surprised. Competitive, I was going to say. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> but when I I, I was surprised because when I was looking, when I was researching where to visit, 
I had no idea that there would be a winery yes. in Georgian Bay, mm -hmm. let alone two. Yeah. So, uh, and, and they're particularly impressive. I know uh, they have a website. I, I don't see it on here, but I guess it's probably Georgian Hills Vineyards. Just look up Georgian CA, Hills Vineyards yes. on Google and you'll mm -hmm. find it. Okay, that's great. Oh, there, an, another new uh, experience in, in the world of wine. But what I really like is the uh, Ida Red, the Frozen to the Core. Uh-huh. So w should we give that one a... Um, mm -hmm. Is that one open? No, let's. No, no we're not going to. We're not going to open that one. We'll save that one for. Okay. For another day. Okay. Well, you um, just imagine that it's just deliciously sweet, iced apple wine. Okay. And, and what, Sarah? What would you pair with that? Um, or and Adam as well? If you guys had to pick your uh, your favorite food item to go with this Ida Red, what would that be? Oh, I would say um, pecans. Mm. Love pecans. Pecan Sarah's got pie. a lot of fattening ideas. <laughs> I <think>. <laughs> <laughs> that sounds good. What about you, Adam? I would Something have that had some salt and sweet in it. Oh, I love that. I, I love foods like that. They have mm -hmm. both. I would have it with a caramel apple pie and a big mm -hmm. scoop of vanilla. Mm -hmm. Wow. Why well, would I have it with anything else? I don't know. I, I think I think those both of those ideas are, are fantastic. Mm -hmm. Or yeah. Ontario yeah. butter tarts would also yes. be good. Uh -huh. Butter tarts. <laughs> okay. Well, well you know, know I feel my waistband expanding. I, I know, know on our way home we just may stop off and pick up a few things. So we, we're pretty well done. Um, the show's drawn to a conclusion, I guess. But mm -hmm. I just want to just um, tell everyone where they can pick up a copy of Dine Magazine. Where can they oh, pick one up? Oh, just call me. Call Sarah. <laughs> <laughs> it is in a few retail outlets, mm -hmm. but because uh, uh, Whole Foods, Pusateri is the cookbook store, uh -huh. are people who carry it, but because it just came out a few days ago, I don't ah. think that we've completed our deliveries yet. Okay. 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 But All if right. you really want one, the number of the office is there, okay. and you can swing by and pick it up. And Sarah mm -hmm. might even sign it for you, autograph it for you. <laughs> Well, thanks That's again great. for coming in today. Thank we always you. enjoy having you on the show and uh, being uh, friends of ours, too. We love both of you so much. Thank you. Yes, thank you. Great to see you guys. And uh, keep on dining and writing about dining out around the world. Thank awesome. you. Awesome. Thanks. thanks a lot. Goodbye, everyone. Thanks for tuning in to the Wine Ladies here, One Sip at a Time. I'm Suzanne. And I'm Georgia. Have a great week, everyone. Bye-bye mm -hmm. now. Mm -hmm.